Good evening, parents, and welcome to our parent university session. My name is Kyron Harvell. I am the director of the STAR grant, which stands for School Transformation Accelerates Results. We are fortunate to have Mr. Brian Crenshaw, attendance and truancy specialist with the Lansing School District, who will present on the topic, I can't get my child to go to school. The major goal of Parent University is to connect with parents through providing resources within the community, enrichment classes, and just get a sense of what you guys need from us as a school district. We see you guys as key stakeholders towards promoting and encouraging academic change, social, emotional, and mental health change in the district. And we want to take your recommendations and we value you as stakeholders, take those things into consideration so we can make the best district possible. I'd like to introduce Mr. Crenshaw. Brian Crenshaw has been a attendance truancy specialist with the Lansing School District since October of 2016. He currently works with students and parents in grades seven through 12. He's a product of the Lansing School District graduating from JW Sexton High School. He served on the Lansing Board of Education in 1999 and was trustee with the Lansing Education No Advancement Foundation from 2000 to 2013. He is active with many Lansing area community groups working on social justice, I'm sorry, on social and justice issues. So Brian, Mr. Crenshaw will present for the first hour from five to six. I encourage you guys to utilize the chat feature at the bottom of your Zoom. Also, please place any questions that you have in the Q&A box and Mr. Crenshaw will be happy to answer those questions from six to 6.30, we'll have our question and answer time. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Mr. Brian Crenshaw. And again, thank you guys for being here, Mr. Crenshaw. Thank you, Mr. Harvell, and welcome to the Lansing School District students, families, parents, guardians, and et cetera. Um, I'm happy to uh, present today on the topic of why I can't get my students to school. As Mr. Harvell stated, I've been working with students and families in the Lansing School District since October of 2016, and working to provide interventions to address issues of students not attending school and getting them back engaged and on the right track to completing their academic journey with the Lansing School District. Um, I'm going to start out with a PowerPoint here, so bear with me as I get ready to share this. So the topic, I can't get my child to go to school. What we're going to be covering in this webinar today or this evening is a review of the state compulsory attendance law. This is what the Lansing School District uses or follows as far as student attendance. Reviewing some parts of the Lansing School District attendance guidelines. These are guidelines established by the Board of Education, which are available in our student handbook for parents and students to review. And we'll touch on some key points of that uh, attendance guideline for you this evening. We'll talk about some student expectations that we have as far as a student attendance and also parent expectations. And then we'll also talk about interventions to address student attendance issues. Um, I hope I'll be able to answer any questions that you have. And if I can't, I will definitely get back with you at a later date. Um, so first I wanna do uh, share a video with you that kind of sets the tone for our e this evening's conversation. Uh, give me just a minute here. Hopefully it won't. Ask parents and they will tell you attending school is important. I think that at his early age, it's really important for him to get used to coming to school every day. Attendance is important and I only have it in one sentence. You miss school, you miss out. As long as you go to school, you get that foundation, then later on you can choose whatever you want. You know, school is very important, not just for your education, but for you to learn how to socialize. Yet, student absenteeism is a national crisis. Nationwide, one out of 10 students are chronically absent, meaning they miss 18 days or more over the course of an entire school year. I learned the importance of attendance when my son was in second grade. 
I didn't know that by him missing one or two days out of the month, he was actually being chronically absent. You know, he was um, not reading at a great level, and um, his writing wasn't as great. So when I went to do a, a meeting with the, with, the, with the teacher, and I asked her, um, you know, what's the reading level of my son? What's his writing level? And um, she told me that he was behind. It's normal for students to miss a few days of school. Kids do get sick, especially when they're younger. But if absences continually add up, even if it's only just two or three days each month, by the end of the school year, students can have missed so much instruction that they experience difficulty learning to read, mastering important math concepts, passing courses, and ultimately graduating from high school. Many times when we talk to the families, uh, they're just not aware about the importance of being in school every single day. Uh, they it may feel that, you know, uh, missing a school day here or there, uh, it's okay because of family issues and other commitments that they have. Uh, but what we see over and over again is when parents get that information and some one actually uh, communicates to them and helps them understand the consequences, they'll be the first champions to ensure that that child is in school. If the parent tells me it's one day here, one day there, I'll let them know that that becomes a habit. One day here, one day there becomes two days here, three days there, and potentially uh, a dropout You know, by the time they get to high school. Good attendance starts with families making it a priority, even when it isn't always easy. It makes a difference when families set a regular bedtime and morning routine to make sure children get enough sleep and wake up ready for school. Make medical appointments when school is not in session. Avoid taking vacations when school is in session. Send children to school every day unless they're truly sick. Finally, develop backup plans for getting children to school if something comes up. So now my son, I want to tell you that he's, uh, he's in eighth grade. Uh, so you, the years have passed. Now I have two other children that are in school. One of them's in fifth grade and the other one's in uh, second grade. Uh, third grade, actually. Uh, my daughter's in third grade. And attendance has become something that uh, in our household, we really um, make it a, a very important. Families can also turn to each other for help, setting up carpools or joint childcare arrangements to make their lives a little easier. As a parent myself, I know how much I value being able to turn to friends and family for help. I think parents can help each other in um, a lot of ways and I think that part of that is the school figuring out exactly what the issue is and why their child's not coming and then creating a connection for parents to say, oh you live in the same area, maybe you can contact this parent or let me put you in touch with this parent to see if you can pick up you know, a child or if they can help take your child home in the afternoon, whatever the issue is. Sometimes, though, families face bigger challenges to getting to school, such as a lack of reliable transportation or stable housing. Chronic illness can also complicate attendance. Um, last year, John, the asthma was really bad, and he would missed almost a week um, each month out of school for, I'd say, six months. When more serious challenges arise, Families can work with their schools to make sure their children get what they need. In Baltimore, for instance, John's asthma-related absences subsided when his school opened a full-service health clinic. If your school doesn't have a school nurse and your child is, has a chronic condition, you could advocate for your child as well as the other children in the school. I would suggest that you have a conversation with the principal and kind of asking the principal what the protocols are if your child you know, should have an asthma attack during school time. If there are things that, um, that are problems that prevent them from coming to school that uh, we cannot help if they don't let us know, just letting parents know that it's okay, that, you know, that times are hard and obviously situations arise and we will you know, do what we can as a school to try to support. Parents can make a real difference in solving the problem of too many absences. We need to work together in our homes, in our schools, in our communities. When we help our children attend today, we ensure they can achieve tomorrow.
So parents, get your kids to school. They have to come every day. It's so fun and the teachers love them and they don't fall off track when they're here every day. So I feel that would be my bit of advice for uh, parents. So as you saw in the video, there were lots of parents who spoke about the importance of attendance for their students and the impact that it has on their students. And so we want to stress today or this evening that attendance is very important for our students to get the necessary uh, skill set that they need to graduate. And so we want to work with you as parents to address student attendance issues and make sure that our students are on the right track to graduate uh, once they get to that 12th grade year. Uh, let me go back to my PowerPoint real quick. So as we, you know, saw that video and saw the enthusiasm of the parents and grandparents and other individuals in the community who talked about attendance, you know, we are, oops, having technical difficulties here. Just a moment. So we are bound in Michigan by the Michigan Compulsory School Attendance Law, which is Public Act 451 to 1976, which is basically talking about why, why um, students have to go to school. And so students between the ages of 6 and 18, with some exceptions, are required to go to school, are required to go to school by law. Um, the Compulsory School Attendance Law also provides the authority for local boards of education to adopt their own attendance policies to address student attendance, which the Lansing School District has done. It also provides guidelines for intermediate and local school districts to employ uh, attendance and enforcement officers, which that's what I do for the Lansing School District for seventh through 12th grade students. And it establishes the number of hours of instruction that students must have in order to uh, go on to the next school year. So the Lansing School District attendance policy, as I mentioned, is something that the Board of Education has adopted and provided in the student handbook, which is available online on our Lansing School District website. I won't go through the entire policy and regulation, but I will point out some key points. The first point that I want to point out is that we do recognize that um, absence from school is necessary in certain situations and conditions, but efforts should be made to keep it at a minimum um, by students, parents, and we also expect our teachers and administrators to be at school and be present for our students. You know, absences, even though they're verified by a parent or guardian, if they become excessive or interfere with the student's education, we will investigate that to find out what is going on and what we can do to help. And for attendance, we look at a student being uh, absent if they miss the entire day or class period. For our seventh through 12th grade students, they have usually seven class periods a day. Um, some of them have attendance taken in the morning or afternoon. But I just wanted to point this out to parents and, and others that, you know, a student is tardy when they miss up to 15 minutes of a class period. When a, they get there after 15 minutes, of class period, they are marked arrive late. Um, if they leave class early or leave school early with, and don't come back, they are considered left early unless they do have an excuse to be out of school. So we have separate procedures for our K-6 and our 712 students. The first and foremost um, important procedure for both, both K-6 through and 7th through 12th grade students is parents are responsible for contacting the school office to let them know that the student will not be in school for the day. Um, we notate, notate this in our student records, our attendance records, and we have this as a verification that there has been some communication between the parent or student, I mean parent and the school. Any student who accumulates eight full day absences or 16 half day absences may be referred to the district attendance specialist. 
And this is where we will reach out to the parent, talk to them, find out what is going on and try to provide some help or intervention to address any issues that the student or family may be having. And then when the, and this is the same for both K6 and 712, parents are allowed to excuse their student up to 10 full days um, for illness or family requests. But we do require that any additional absences under a parent excuse or parent request must have a student, uh, excuse me, a physician's note to accompany the uh, excuse. So that must include the reason why the student was out, the number of days they were out, um, the dates the students will be coming back to school and also signature by the physician. And that should be turned into the school office so that they can um, make note of that. And then of course, if all efforts fail to correct any attendance issues going on, the attendance specialist may proceed with legal or appropriate action against the parent. And I wanna note that for K through six students, the responsibility of attendance primarily falls on the parent because the student is at, a, at an age where they um, need that assistance from the parent to get to and from school. For the seventh through 12th grade students, the responsibility falls upon the student because they are at an age that they can make those decisions and be in school on their own. They don't have to have their hand held to walk to school and everything else, but they are at an age that they can make the appropriate decisions to be in school when they need to be. So again, for seventh through 12th grade students, parents must contact the school and let the school know if the student will not be coming to school for that day or for whatever period. When they exceed the 10 absences, full day absences, they must have a physician's uh, note stating why they're absent, the dates they'll be absent, and they need to turn that into the school. And again, if all efforts fail to correct any attendance issues that are going on with the student, you know, the district attendance specialist can proceed with legal action or appropriate action against the student and the parent. Um, we try to work with our students and parents. You know, we talk to them, find out what's going on. Um, I've held meetings at the schools with students, parents, administration, and we try to address any barriers that the student may be having with attendance and get them back on a right track so that we don't have to take legal action down the road. So let's talk about chronic absence, chronic absenteeism versus truancy. Chronic absenteeism, absenteeism is described as missing 10% of school days within an academic year for any reason. This is combined excused absences, non-excused absences. Um, when a student misses more than 10% of the school year, they are considered chronically absent. Truancy refers to any unexcused absences that the student has. Now, students may go to the school, but they don't go to their class. That's considered truant. They may leave the school for a bit, come back to the school, that's considered truant. Whenever they are not in their assigned class and there is um, evidence that they've been in the school, they are considered truant from that class or that class period. Um, here I have another video of why attendance matters. It's a short video. So if you give me a moment, I will switch over. And this talks about chronic absenteeism.
Okay, so before we move on, I just want to touch base on uh, what we are considering attendance during our screen to screen learning period. Um, right now, our students are working all remotely. They are utilizing our uh, Google Classroom with their teachers. And we consider a student present during this time if they connect through the synchronous learning period time between um, usually 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. when the teachers are having their classroom time. Um, that's considered that a student is present. Um, we do understand that there are sometimes issues with students logging in, um, getting access to the internet and such. Um, but we do allow for students to check in with their teachers um, after that synchronous learning time and still consider being present um, before, if they, as long as they check in with the teacher before midnight. Um, if they just don't, don't contact, if they don't connect with their teacher during the synchronous learning time or after that time, they are considered absent from their learning day for that day. Um, parents are still encouraged to contact the school if the student is unable to attend for sickness or whatever reason, so that we are aware of the reason why the student wasn't online during that learning time. So let's talk about why um, a student's absent may be excused. So we know that there's various reasons that go on with students that, you know, they can't come to school for whatever reason. Again, parents are allowed to excuse their student up to 10 times a year. Um, after that 10th time, it must be accompanied, the excuse must be uh, from a medical physician. We understand that there are deaths in the family, uh, family friends that have passed away, and so students do attend funerals. So those are excused absences, as long as the school is aware of that in advance. Some school-related issues, suspensions, they miss the bus, they're out of school for administrative reasons, field trips, et cetera. Those are considered excused absences. Sometimes there are legal or court appearances that students must attend, so those are excused. We do have some, some of our students who are, uh, have some time, spend some time at the Ingham County Youth Facility. Those are excused absences. They still receive their education, whether in the youth facility from a Lansing School District teacher. Um, and so we hope that they are continuing on pace to, you know, be ready to come back to the classroom. Any medical issues or physician excused uh, absences. And for religious observations. So next we'll go and talk about what are some of the common reasons students miss school. And this I got from the Fairfax County Public Schools website, but it, it is synonymous across the, you know, with most districts as reasons why students miss school. Students may have chronic health issues. You know, we know we have students with asthma, diabetes, uh, different type of health issues, and that causes them to miss school. Family travel from time to time. Although it's encouraged that uh, families take their vacations during the approved times, you know, spring breaks, Christmas breaks, summer breaks, um, family does travel, and so those are reasons why students miss school. Students are in transition or homeless. You know, students move from time to time and they may not have a bus available to them because the school hasn't received updated information in order for them to get a bus or the family has become homeless. And we do have a program in the Lansing School District called Family Overcoming Rough Times, which uh, short, uh, the short name of it is FORT, where we have a specialist that will work with families who are homeless to get them busing, to get them um, clothing, if that's an issue, to help them overcome that barrier and get them back into the classroom where they need to be. Transportation issues. We know that sometimes the school, you know, students miss buses or parents' vehicles break down or there's other issues that are going on and that's a common reason why students miss school. Students become academically disengaged. You know, they've missed so much school, they figure, why, why go to class? Or else they're not understanding what's going on in the classroom, so they just stop going to the class because they don't want to ask questions or feel embarrassed in front of their peers. And that's a common reason why students, you know, miss a lot of school. We know our students have a lot of mental health issues and stress. I mean, right now we're in a, uh, period of time where there is a lot of stuff going on with COVID and other things going on in the world and our students 
bear a lot of that in their own, you know, minds and, and bodies. So, you know, when they have mental health and stress issues, that causes them to miss school. Sleep deprivation and fatigue. You know, our students have smartphones, they have tablets, they have gaming systems, they have cable TV in their room, and sometimes they like to stay up a lot. You know, this is one of the reasons I hear a lot from um, families is that, well, they're staying up playing on their phone or they're playing a gaming system, and that causes them to be sleep deprived and fatigued. And so they can't get up in the morning, they can't make it to that first class of the day. Um, and that's a cause reason why they miss school. So as I mentioned before, we have expectations for students. We expect our students to attend school and class every day on time. We expect them not to be involved in behaviors that will cause them to be suspended from school. We expect them to turn in any medical documentation to the main office or the attendance clerk so that their attendance can be excused if they are out of school for those reasons. And we expect them to ensure that any missed classwork because of an absence is made up in accordance to uh, in accordance with the teacher and school guidelines. You know, it's important that, you know, if a student is going to be out of school for an extended period of time, the parents can contact the school and get that work uh, from the teacher so that the student can be working at home and at least be prepared to be caught up when they return to the classroom. At, you know, at this time, I want to talk about some things. Um, you know, we have students who have various issues that are going on. You know, they get some new friends who cause them to, or encourage them to skip class. You know, we want to, you know, work with families when this is happening and identify those individuals who are causing students to miss school. You know, as it was mentioned before, students are academically disengaged from the classroom. You know, they aren't at pace with their other students, so they stop going to class. And we want to work with families to address those issues and get the student caught back up. Um, you know, we want students to be connected to our staff in the building. So they may be a coach that they have from a, a sporting team. It may be an administrator. It may be one of their teachers. You know, they should be connecting with someone in the school that they can have a, um, you know, uh, who they can talk to whenever there's an issue and encourage your students to identify that individual in the building that they can talk to and work with whenever there's an issue um, that's going on with attendance. You know, normally I will contact the administrator or contact the teacher once I've talked to a parent in regards to any issues that are going on with the student and we try to work those out. But it's also up to the students to let us know what's going on in order for us to help them. And so I have two short videos that I want to play here. One talks about the importance of school attendance, and it's kind of based from a younger elementary school student's perspective. Um, it's an animation video, but it does have some very good points. And then there's also a, a video from Magic Johnson, who was a Ever graduate, and he talks about the importance of attendance. So let me cue these up here. I am six years old and I'm in first grade. I like going to school, but some days I have to miss school. Sometimes my asthma is bad or I just need to rest. My mom always tries her best, but sometimes I have to miss school because things don't always go as planned. If I miss too many days of school, I probably won't be able to read, write, or do math like my friends. When I miss school for any reason, 
Even if it's excused, it can be hard for me to catch up to my friends. And when I try to make up work at home, it's not the same as learning from my teachers and friends in class. If I keep missing school days, I might fail a grade or even worse, I might not graduate. elementary school now, but when I get bigger, I will go to high school. And the less I'm absent now, the better I'll do in school later. Mommy has big dreams for me, and so do I. When I'm in school every day, I can stay on track, keep up with my friends, and I'll be ready for fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade, and more. My mommy can help make sure I don't miss too many days now, so I can make her proud and do well in school. I know sometimes it's not easy, but my mom is doing her best to help me succeed. Hi, this is Magic Johnson. I played 13 years in the NBA. I've won five NBA championships. I even made the NBA All-Star team 12 times. And I even had time to win an Olympic gold medal. How'd I get there? As a kid, I practiced every day. You know what else I did every day? I went to school. Graduated high school, first in my family ever. Went to college on a scholarship. School is why I made it big time. That's why I'm here today. In New York City last year, one out of every five kids missed a month or more of school. That's crazy. School is your best shot to a better life, better job, better money, trust me. And hey, mom and dad and grandma, it's your job, school every day, it's the law. It's your child's future. No one costs a shot in your life but you. So look, don't drop the ball, pick it up, run hard, Every student, every day, spread the word. So parents, we have some expectations for you as, um, you know, being responsible to help your students, you know, be in school and everything else. We expect you to call the school and let the school know when the student is ill and won't be able to come to school or if they're going to be late for any reason. Make sure that your contact information, phone numbers and email are up to date with the school. You know, we utilize a robocall system to let you know when a student is absent or sometimes we email you to find out why a student isn't in school. And if we don't have that updated information, we're unable to reach you. So it's very important for you to uh, make sure that that information is up to date with the school in case you ever change your number or email. And make sure you get any medical, get medical documentation when your student is absent related to a medical appointment or issue. And I always encourage parents to keep a copy of this for your own records, because we do sometimes know that students don't turn in the record, you know, turn in the documentation. So if the parents have a copy of that, you know, they can turn it into the school in case it's ever asked for. So there's 10 tips to help your student to get to school on time every day. And these are from the Academy of Students and tracking that attendance. You know, we, we strive to have 100% attendance, but we do understand that that sometimes is not accurately able to be done. So we, we want you to set attendance goals and track those with your students. Make sure that your student gets a good night's sleep. Sometimes that is, sometimes you have to take away those devices that are in their room in order to ensure that they get the good night's sleep, you know, to get to school the next day. Sometimes you have to prepare the night before, um, putting things in backpacks, making sure that the backpacks are by the door. Sometimes with the younger children, picking out clothes the night before and setting those out so that when they get up, they can brush their teeth, take a shower, and get ready and go out the door to school. Try to schedule any dental or medical appointments before or after school. You know, that was mentioned in the first video. 
Um, if you can get an appointment before school or after school, it's better for the students so that they aren't missing out on their academics. Try to schedule any trips that you have, any extended trips during the school breaks. You know, we have summer break, we have Christmas break, we have spring break. Um, try to schedule those extended trips during those times so that the student isn't out of school for long periods of time. Don't let your students stay home unless they are truly sick. Um, they, you know, it's, we understand, you know, with what's going on with COVID and everything else that, you know, if you're sick, you should stay home. But when we return to our face-to-face -face learning, um, unless they are truly sick, throwing up, you know, upset stomach, a high temperature, you know, try to get them to go to school if you can control that with aspirin or Tylenol or some, some other type of uh, medication. Talk to your students about why they don't want to go to school. You know, it could be an issue of bullying. It could be an issue of um, they don't like the teacher. It could be an issue that they have an issue with other students in the classroom. Um, but if we don't talk to them, we don't find out why it is that they aren't going to school. So it's very important for you as parents to try to talk to your students to find out why they aren't wanting to go to school. If there is a chronic health issue, we do provide for what's called a 5-0 student to be in school and address their medical issues. Sometimes a student has a, um, where they have to take insulin for their diabetes, or they have an issue with having to go to the bathroom numerous times. If it's medically documented that that's an issue for the student, the school can set up a 504 plan for the student and address those issues and provide those accommodations. And all you need to do is contact the school principal to get that process started. You know, follow the school rules as far as reporting absences or what's required to have for the um, absence to be excused and everything else. And keep track of your student attendance. Follow up when the dates missed don't add up. If you know that your student was out of school because they had a medical appointment, but they have additional absences, if you keep track of that and follow up on those days, we can find out and address those ahead of time before it gets out of hand and then we have to take the next step to address the issue. So how can you keep track of your student's attendance? Lance School District has a great, great tool called Parent View, which you can access from your smartphone, your desktop, your laptop, or your tablet. And what Parent View is, it grades the student's schedule, different types of information that is right at your fingertips that you can keep track of what's going on for your student. And in order to get access to Parent View, you just have to get the activation key from the school office. And you can download it on your smartphone or tablet from the Google Play or Apple Store. And once you get access to it, all of your students who, you know, you have responsibility for will be under that one parent view access um, application. So you can switch between students and see where they are. You can monitor attendance and grades and information on parent view, as I mentioned before. The school sends out report cards and that lists on there the absences that the student may have had. So you can keep track of that and compare that to the dates that you know that the student was out of school for any excused absence reasons. And how will you be notified if your student is absent? As I mentioned before, um, you may get a call from the school office asking why the student isn't in school. And that's why it's very important for you to have the updated contact information on file. You may get a robocall from our robocall system letting you know that the student was absent from a particular class or a number of classes for that day. You may get a communication from the teacher. I know many teachers reach out to parents when they haven't seen a student for a certain period of time to find out what is going on. And they, they log this communication in our student contact log. And as I'm reviewing attendance for students, I see that the teacher has made attempts to talk to the parent or they've talked to the parent and this is what's going on. And this is what they are doing to try to help the student. So 
So what interventions do we offer to address student attendance issues? Our first level of interventions are school level interventions. We try to address the attendance issue at the school level first before it gets out of hand. Um, it may be addressing the transportation issue, um, getting them tokens if they're in high school or a bus pass if they're in high school, um, if they don't have any, uh, if they don't have reliable transportation to get to school, um, working with the families to address any issues that are going on. Um, we have student support specialists in our, in all of our buildings who work with students and families to address these type of issues. And so we hope that, you know, you'll work with the student support specialists if you have any issue or your school principal to address what's going on in the household. We have some community partners. Um, we have a program with community mental health that we can refer students to if they're having mental health issues. And it's a free program where they will meet with the master's level, master's level therapist to come up with strategies to address the issues that are causing them to miss school. We also have a program with uh, restorative justice. Um, if a student receives a truancy ticket from a public safety officer, and this is primarily in the secondary schools, uh, they can go through a program and the parent and the student can work on the issues that are causing them to miss school and try to correct those issues before the ticket goes to the next level. And they sometimes can be dismissed without any uh, legal action taking place. And then our last step is legal interventions. With our elementary students, we have what's called the first step uh, program, which is with the 30th Circuit Court. And then with the secondary 7th through 12th grade students, we have what's called Truancy Court. And both of those programs are our last resort when we cannot get the issue of attendance corrected um, with the parent and student. And the courts provide additional levels of intervention that we can't provide at the school district. Um, and it, they may, you know, inter, inter, um, not interfere, excuse me. They may help the family overcome those barriers and address those issues going forward. So where can you find out information about attendance? As I stated before, most of our videos that I showed this evening were from Attendance Works. It is a uh, national web-based uh, national organization that addresses attendance issues. Um, you can contact your student's school. Um, that's usually the first step for you to, you know, address any issues that your student attendant your student is having with attendance. And then I've listed here uh, my colleague Rose Taphouse, who handles our K-6 students. Then I, of course, deal with our 7th through 12th grade students and families. So we're also resources for you to talk about any attendance issues that your student may be having and try to address those and get them on the right path. So Mr. Crenshaw is putting his email in the chat as well. So again, thank you guys very much for attending. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to us. And you guys have a good evening. And we appreciate the support of Lane School District. Take care. Take care.